And by the way, the reason I stopped wasn't because I no longer believe in it. It's because I came to the conclusion and I realized the truth. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channels. Make sure to go and get your up to 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. This video is energized by Celsius Energy. It's a healthier alternative to the energy drinks out there. It'll give you a 15% discount. It brings each can down to like $1.25, so it's a steal. I started, spot price was about $17.05. Premiums back then for, you know, just generic rounds and stuff like that, it was about a dollar over spot. American Silver Eagles were about a dollar fifty. I think Maple Leafs were about a dollar twenty-five. So premiums were like hardly even existent back then, if you think about it. Very, very affordable, and spot price was significantly lower. And if you fast forward from that day that I got started to present day today, silver, the spot price alone, premiums excluded, spot price has almost doubled. From 17 all the way up to the 30 to 32 range, it's almost double. And I had gotten started stacking. It was either the very end of 2016 or the very end of 2017. But it was only $17 and change. And I remember, pretty sure that was 2017. And moving into 2018, the first couple months, I was picking up silver maybe once or twice a month. I was doing a cross between ordering some silver online and picking up some silver from the local coin shop going back and forth between the two just you know picking up random stuff and for the first couple of months or really probably most of my first year of stacking spot price of silver was like moving in a downward direction which made me very very happy considering that I had just gotten started if I barely have any silver at all or just a handful of silver why would I want the spot price to move up I wanted to get as cheap as possible. I wanted to get as close to zero dollars as possible so I can get as much of it as I possibly can before a couple of years or a couple of decades go by and, you know, things in the world take place, whether it be geopolitical conflict or whether it be whatever, helping push or boost silver up, push it in an upward direction. But when I had first gotten started, the first year of stacking, it went from 1705 down to, I think it went as low as 14 something. And that's when I was really stockpiling as much silver as I possibly could. And, and, and I remember I took full advantage. I remember thinking to myself, there, there's, a, there's a good chance that I may never ever see silver go this low again. It might never be this low. This might be potentially the opportunity of a lifetime. Who knows? Silver could turn around and go up to, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 100 dollars and the rest of my life goes by and I never see silver go below, you know, x amount. So, I took it as an opportunity and I capitalized on it. So, for silver to have gone as low as $14 and change, and for me to stockpile as much as I did during that year. And then moving into 2019, I remember silver started climbing back up in the second half of 2019, if memory serves me right. I remember it was, you know, like $18, $19. And I was still picking up some. I remember saying anything under $20 is a fire sale. And remember, this was before premiums went wacky. This is when premiums were still like a dollar, dollar twenty-five, dollar fifty per ounce over spot. Premiums were still very, very low. Then we moved into 2020. January and February, the first half of March, were just fine. You know, there was, you know, there was a lot of talk on the news about people all, all over the place getting sick, but nothing was really too chaotic just yet. And then uh, the middle of March, boom, planet Earth took a dive. And not only did planet Earth take a dive, the spot price of silver and gold took a dive as well. Spot price of silver got chopped nearly in half, like overnight. It was, I think it was like 18 or $19 before anything happened. And then out of nowhere, it got crushed hammered down to $11 and something cents. So going from $18, $19, getting smacked all the way down to 11. 
And the issue that people were having with silver and gold was that if you shut down a bunch of small businesses and, and everything, you know, has to close their doors and lock up, stay at home, blah, 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 blah. Obviously, that means the coin shops are closed as well. So you couldn't support your local coin shop and we're forced to buy all of our silver and gold online. But the problem there was there were a lot of issues with websites and a lot of these online precious metal dealers picked up most of their silver, $16, $17. They were selling it for about $19 plus a dollar to $1.50 premium. They were looking to make a profit as well. They're a business as well. And even though it pained me as the customer, I believe in a free market. I believe in businesses being able to up their prices. I believe in supply and demand. I don't believe that things need to be like required. I, I think the businesses should be able to do whatever they want. Even though I, the customer, took damage over it, I still support their right to do whatever they want. And what they chose to do <laughs> was they orders ended up getting blocked. Now, I'm not saying that everything was on purpose. I don't know. But I do know for a fact that they picked up a lot of their silver for a higher dollar amount than what the spot price got smacked all the way down to. So all of a sudden, people weren't able to place orders online. Everything said out of stock on all these websites. Oh, everything's out of stock. Everything's out of stock. Who knows? Maybe they were out of stock. But miraculously, a day or two later, everything was back in stock and premiums were up by like quadruple. Premiums were no longer $1.50. Now they're four, five, six, seven dollars an ounce over spot. So even though the spot price got cut nearly in half, the premiums got marked up so much, you were still paying $18, $19, $20 an ounce anyway. Spot price is $11. Why am I paying $20? Just last week, if the spot price was $11, I'd be paying like maybe at most $13 because premiums were like less than $2. So that happened and it caused a lot of frustration. It caused a lot of confidence to be lost in these online precious metal dealing storefronts and it caused a lot of caused a lot of financial pain. Because if the spot price is only $11, we should be able to, you know, get our hands on silver. But, you, you know, everybody says, oh, buy low, sell high. But what happens when you try to buy low and there's no way to buy low because you close the friggin' store? And the online and the online stores are having uh, technical difficulties or whatever what was going on. Well, how am I supposed to buy low if I don't have a way to buy low? <laughs> it caused a lot of frustration. But the silver that I have been stockpiling up over the years and a little bit of gold as well, that was a form of financial preparation. It was just simply an airbag. That's what the precious metals are. It's just an airbag. Everything else that you're using to build wealth, that's the vehicle. The precious metals, that's the airbag. That's the way I see it, at least. But that year, silver, the spot price of silver, I should say, made a relatively, and gold, made a relatively quick turnaround and it went from getting hammered down to $11 an ounce pretty much overnight to, you know, creeping its way back up a little bit. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 dollars, which is kind of around where it was prior to getting smacked in the first place, 18, 19 dollars. Then it made its way back up to 18, 19 dollars. And guess what? Logic would tell us, okay, yes, yeah, okay, whatever, fine. The premiums are high just until the spot price returns, and then we'll go back to normal, right? 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 That's what we were thinking. And guess what? Spot price went back to $18, $19, and guess what? Premiums were still four, five, six, seven dollars over spot. Oh my god. A couple months ago, spot price was $18 plus a premium. It brings it up to maybe $20. Well, guess what? Now the premium is back up to where it was, $18, $19. And if you factor in the new premium, I'm paying $25 an ounce. How is this real life? And it frustrated a lot of people. 
Silver then surpassed the $18 mark. Surpassed the $19 mark. It was $19.25, $19.50, $19.75. I remember back then, I was making like two videos every single day talking about silver and what in the world is going on. I was talking about it. Everybody was talking about it. Silver's about to hit $20 an ounce for the first time in years. Silver's about to hit $20 an ounce. For the first time during my stacking journey, I've never seen spot price hit or surpass $20. I was saying it's about to happen, it's about to happen. It was hesitant, it went up to 17, eight, or it went up to 1980, 1990, back down to 1986. And people were commenting back to me, silver is never gonna hit $20 an ounce. Mark my word, silver will never ever hit $20 an ounce ever again. If it does, I will do this, but it's, I'm not gonna do that because it's not gonna happen. And sure enough, 12 hours later, Silver hit $20 an ounce. Well, well, well. Well, well, well. And guess what? That's the least interesting part of the story. It gets better. It then very quickly hit $21, $22, $23, $24, $25, $26, 27 It went as high as, I think... I think it went up to $29, and that's when that's when it started getting hesitant. It, it didn't budge from there. I remember it did hit... Th I was watching it. I was doing a live stream at the time. It hit $30 for like a split second, then it pulled back to $29 something. But it went from, you know, finally breaking the $20 an ounce mark all the way up to $29 and change over the span of a couple weeks or maybe a month or two, I believe. I don't remember off the top of my head. So much has happened over the last four and a half years. But that was kind of like the ride we were on. And this was all during peak COVID. This was like, this was like the height of the pandemic, mid to late 2020. And so much craziness was going on in the world outside of the world of precious metals. It was just, it was like, it was pandemonium in all realms. And coincidentally, 2020 is the year that I like really fully dived into the stock market. Like, I saw silver spiking in one year. In, the, in, the, in that calendar year, 2020, I watched the spot price of silver go from $18, get hammered down to $11 and change, and then work its way all the way up to just a hair under $30. Was I stockpiling silver at that time? No. I was hustling my friggin' face off making two videos a day, still working, still doing everything that I could, trying to, trying, to, trying to earn every dollar possible, and I was dumping it all into the stock market, which was, like, bottomed out. I'm not going to get, you know, a whole lot of silver at, like, at, at a, you know, a multiple year or, like, a, a decade high. I'm not going to, like, stockpile silver like that at that time. While there was a, an even bigger opportunity just sitting there calling my name... So that's when I shifted my focus from wealth preservation to wealth building. Because I realized, I was like, oh, I don't have any wealth that needs to be preserved just yet. <laughs> you can't preserve something that you don't have. I need to build wealth first, and then I can preserve what I built. So I shift my focus from stacking to investing. From preservation, safety, you know, protection, defense mode, to just full-on attack mode. I started playing offense for the first time. Like, real deal offense. Not just building my own brand, not just building myself up, but investing properly and effectively. And over the years of doing so, I have seen tremendous, tremendous success. And at the time, Precious metals, primarily silver, was my number one priority. Is it my number one priority right now? No, it hasn't been for years. I haven't picked up any silver and I can't even tell you how long. I haven't even picked up like a, a little silver dime and I don't even know how long. Years. But here's the thing. When I was prioritizing it the way that I was, and by the way, the reason I stopped wasn't because I no longer believe in it. It's because I came to the conclusion and I realized the truth. I was like, oh, I see. This is a wealth preservation tool. I don't have any wealth 
to preserve just yet. So let me build some wealth first. And then other opportunities opened up. The market crash of 2020, for example. Business opportunities, ways to actually make money and build something for myself, which I can later down the road come around full circle and take what I built, convert over to precious metals to preserve what I built as a safety net. That's all it is. It's a safety net. It's almost like an insurance policy on your wealth. It's not a wealth building tool. So I came to that conclusion and I changed up my strategy a little bit. And thank God I did that because I would be so far behind if I had stuck with the precious metals exclusively. Get yourself some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channels. Make sure to go and get your up to 12 free fractional shares by downloading Weeble and funding your account. This video is energized by Celsius Energy. It's a healthier alternative to the energy drinks out there. It'll give you a 15% discount. It brings each can down to like $1.25. So it's a steal.